Good morning. I'm going to read a little bit from Matthew 28, verse 20. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I had commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. He is always with us. Think about everything that you've been through in life and all those times that you didn't think you were going to make it through and you did. The Holy Spirit strengthens us. When we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, He dwells in us. He strengthens us. He guides us. He is our best friend, our King, our Savior, our Bridegroom. He is our everything. And it's very important to stay close to Him. The world is full of sin. And it's getting darker. But we see where all of this is going. When you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, your sins are washed clean. Jesus is the only way to heaven. He is the only way to God the Father. He is the Savior of the world. I've been seeing a lot lately. I've been coming across scripture a lot lately. Um, and Christian pictures, if you know what I mean, you know, that say God sees your heart. I've been seeing that a lot lately. God sees everybody's heart. He sees who truly wants to live for Christ. Sorry, you might, no noisy in the background. You might hear a car, motorcycle. It's my neighbor. We live by a highway, so sometimes you hear that in the background. If you haven't accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, I implore you to do it today. Don't put your faith and trust in these world leaders who are causing so much chaos in the world. And then when everything finally hits the fan and goes down, they go underground in their shelters. They can't, they can't hide from God. Put your faith and trust in Jesus. He sacrificed himself, took on our sin so we could go to heaven. That's love. That is love. And he sees your heart. This article, and I think I accidentally, I think I accidentally deleted it. Sorry. I have a, I, I don't have a computer. I have a phone. So yeah, I gotta go back to it. This is from Prophecy News Watch. It's titled, is worldwide, is worldwide Jew hatred setting the stage for the tribulation period? In our current social and political spectrum, people tend to see things two dimensionally, usually to the left or to the right. Of course, as current trend, trends bear witness to this, this is causing a great deal of social and political friction which often spills over into violence. Sometimes this is agitated by nefarious forces who have a deeper agenda, and sometimes it occurs organically, aided by a spiritual enemy who hates mankind, who hates the Jews, and who hates God. The latest trigger point for demonically inspired violence against Jews is the war that Hezbollah is conducting you might hear my mom, I'm sorry, against Hamas and Hezbollah. Aside from the spiritual paradigm with which Christians view and stand with Israel, most rational people, even unbelievers, would have a sense that sympathizing with Hamas right now is akin to endorsing the kidnap, torture. I'm not going to read the rest of those, but we, we they're, they're very graphic, but we, we know what they've done. And um, basically, uh, it, murder of Jews. And there's two other words in there I'm not going to repeat. People who thought that the horrors of the Holocaust were long behind them have suddenly been shaken by terrifying sense of foreboding as people the worldwide call for the annihilation of the Jewish people once again. Very sad. My prayers go out to Israel and the Jewish people. In the early stages of Hitler's plan to exterminate the Jewish people, perhaps ordinary people in far-off nations, 
would have pleaded ignorance to the Jews' plight on the basis that the news didn't reach them. However, this time around, the evidence of Jew hatred is there for all to see, since anti-Semites um, cannot resist posting their abhorrent material online. <clears throat> it must be said that it is vitally important for Christians right now to hold a biblical worldwide uh, worldview. In short, this means that the believers clings tightly to the very scriptures that offer practical and spiritual wisdom that enables us to consider everything we encounter in the world from a godly perspective. For all people, believers or non-believers, when faced with a problem or challenge, our worldwide view becomes the source and foundation in which we make our actions or response. But if I, again, if you are a non-believer, I suggest right here, right now, you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Jesus, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I believe you are the Son of God who came down from heaven. Born of a virgin, you lived a sin-free life, taken on my sin on the cross. You suffered tremendously, died and was buried. But on the third day, you're alive, you're seated at the right hand of the Father. Wash me clean with your precious blood. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. God sees everybody's heart. I suggest you do that today. The article goes on to say this means that whatever content we filter into our worldwide, into our world view will determine how we act, speak, and think. Sorry, I just I just woke up. I was delivering late last night, so I'm sorry if I sound groggy. Therefore, it is probably of little surprise that the most vulgar displays of anti-Semitism I've been found on college and university campuses because many colleges and universities of this era are indoctrinating their students with politically progressive and unbiblical ideas. That's true. The fundamental reason behind this is that students are taught what to think rather than how to think. As an American newscaster once said, they, the professors, dominate and intimidate the students. If you go up against them, your grade often suffers. There is a tyranny in higher education that is gravely harming this nation. Another reason the colleges and universities seem to be hotbeds for hatred is that many are taught that the only paradigm with which to view the world is the oppressor, an oppressed class. Sustainably, the education system, including lower grade schools, has sought to address culture and racial prejudice but has, in fact, inflamed the culture and race wars. For example, James Logan High School in California offers a course in ethnic studies and social justice that aims to teach students to challenge and criticize power, oppression, capitalism, white supremacy, imperialism, and colonialism. I don't know how to pronounce that word. That's a tongue twister. <laughs> I'm just trying to pronounce it. For their website, we read ethnic studies encompass the five C's culture, competence, critical thinking, collaboration, community, and creativity. It is cur currently relevant. It, it, I cannot speak this. I got to make these videos after I have my coffee. <laughs> oh, gosh. I opened my eyes and started making the video, basically. It is curriculum relevant and accurate to the cultures in our classroom. Well, that's a tongue twister. And it is a path to understanding and appreciating everyone's identity. The factors that create it and the evolution of identity. Ethnic studies will help students understand how our social construct is affected by race and the root causes of oppression, power, and privilege. Furthermore, the New Haven Unified School District Ethnic Studies and Social Justice Academy, which is part of James Logan's high school, adopt the motto, 
Learn, Lead, Liberate, which features a socialist raised fist grasping a pencil. Don't be fooled by the benign sounding name, Ethnic Studies. It is simply critical race theory in disguise. It is a cleverly crafted deception that, on the face of it, offers a unifying cultural learning experience while essentially promoting hostility amongst races. In fact, recent reports indicate that Minnesotan lawmakers are introducing changes to their education system, which are among some of the most radical in the country. Well, the changes aren't about education. They are about incitement to take action to disrupt and dismantle America's fundamental social and political institutions. Minnesota's new K-12 social studies standards exemplify this ideology, as it requires students to organize, organize with others to resist systematic and coordinated exercises of power against marginalized oppressed groups. Educational institutes are no longer focused on raising socially adjusted, educated people. New education standards and related benchmarks are focused on instilling a seed within people that leads to hostility against any who belong to the oppressor class. To give examples, kindergarten must retell a story about an unfair experience that conveys a power imbalance. Wow. Wow, kindergarten. First graders must identify examples of ethnicity, equality, liberation, and systems of power, and use those examples to construct meanings for the terms how times have changed. In first grade, I was focused on coloring in and producing poorly made craft items. Yeah, that's what I remember, which my family would pretend to love. Wow. Like the ashtrays. Remember the ashtrays that we would all make? Um, I remember one time in, uh, it was either kindergarten or first grade, we made pretzels. Um, I remember in gym class they were teaching us to hustle. I think I just gave my age, huh? We, we had to learn the hustle in gym class. Um, now all this? Wow. Our young adults are supposed to be viewed as leaders of the future. Sadly, their education experience has led them to believe in vulgar binaries, binaries in which they must place themselves and the rest of humanity. When I was young, we often played war games. The premises were simple. They were the good guys and they were bad guys. And just like that, just like those pretend more <coughs> games in our youth, excuse me, it would appear that many view the world through a similar and unalterable paradigm. Good guys, oppressed, and bad guys, oppressors. This is why, <coughs> excuse me, this is why, despite the horrors of the Hamas terror attack on Israel, many refuse to see Israel as oppressed. Long ago, it was determined by social justice crusaders that Israel will perpetually fall into the category of oppressor. And because of the oppressor-oppressed narrative, people assign themselves a moral license to identify and hate the oppressor, Israel, without disrupting their conscience. Anti-Semitism is an early indicator of a troubled culture. And if the terrorist attack by Hamas teaches us anything, it is that Western nations are in deep trouble, deeper trouble than they thought. Many may claim that the virtue of free speech must be upheld, but free speech which abuses this privilege to spew Jew hate, Jewish hatred must be denounced and condemned. I agree. Free speech of the kind we are hearing throughout our nations is not the hallmark of a free and vibrant culture. It is the hallmark of a culture which is in great spiritual peril. In 2022, Deborah Lipstadt, a noted historian and the U.S. Special Envoy to monitor and combat anti-Semitism, said this, quote, anti-Semitism is like the canary in the coal mine of democracy. It is a threat, a warning. If you're an anti-Semit, if you are anti-Semitism, then you think, well, 
that then you think, well, the justice system isn't fair because it's controlled by Jewish people. The government isn't fair because it's controlled by Jewish people. The media isn't fair because it's controlled by Jewish people. You lose faith in the democratic institutions. As a historian, I can think of no democracy that tolerated anti-Semitism and remained a vibrant democracy. Deborah is correct, but the peril is even greater. It's greater than that. Embrace, embracing Jewish hatred is not only an indicator of culture decline, but also of God's impending judgment. The evidence of this is found not only in the Bible, but also the history books. Babylon, Egypt, Greece, Rome, Soviet Union. They all touched the apple of God's eye and they felt God's hand of judgment. Assyria, Babylon, Persia. Yep, they all touched the apple of God's eye and they felt God's hand of judgment. As Christians, we must not only pray for Israel, but pray for our own nations. God has taken note of individuals and nations who are cursing his people. He sure is. He sure is. He's in control. And he sure is. He is taking note. Our country in the United States, that it, it's done with. It's done with. I've never seen anything like this in my lifetime. This is all getting prepared for the tribulation. Rapture could happen any time. Hold Jesus' hand. Don't let it go. Because, family, we are going home. I will leave the link in the description box. I hope you have a great day. Keep looking up. And pray for Israel and the Jewish people. God bless you. I will talk to you soon.